Escape Pod, Episode 839. Universal Archive of Human History, FAQ. By Arturo Sierra. Hello, and welcome to Escape Pod, your weekly science fiction podcast. I'm Valerie Valdez, your host for this episode. Our story this week is Universal Archive of Human History, FAQ, by Turro Sierra. This is an Escape Pod original and is the author's first publication. Arturo Sierra lives in Santiago, Chile with his cat. So far, he's lived a very uninteresting existence, and with any luck, it will remain that way. Our narrator for this story, Roberto Suarez, lives in Portland, Oregon. By day, he works as a community college student advocate and recruiter. By night, he geeks out on all things fantasy and science fiction, comic books and board games. He produces and co-hosts A Pod of Casts, the Game of Thrones podcast, at apodofcasts.com, and is a proud monthly supporter of all Escape Artist productions. Roberto is a father of four younglings being raised in the ways of the Force, and is married to Barbara, his son and stars. Now, get ready to learn some ground rules for proper research methodologies in the largest library ever, because it's story time. Universal Archive of Human History, FAQ, by Arturo Sierra. Narrated by Roberto Suarez. The Gran Glisa Universal Archive of Human History contains over 5.7 times 10 to the 35 books and an innumerable collection of shorter works. Moreover, it is continuously growing, thanks to additions from spacefaring traders such as the ones who ferried you here. We buy all works of the human mind that the interstellar pilgrims bring to Gran Glisa often from the furthest reaches of the sphere of settled space. The oldest files are as ancient as writing, meaning we store over a giga year of human culture in our vaults. The extent of our collection overwhelms visitors, with good reason. This document has been prepared to assuage some of your probable concerns. So, let's get to your questions. When will I be allowed to start my research? I can't wait to roam the library. Before you come anywhere near our documents, you'll be required to complete an eight local year training course. You'll learn to navigate our multi-level indexing system, as well as the proper manner in which to conduct your research. Your previous experience with the pretty huge library at your homeworld does not qualify you to handle our collection. Maybe you still haven't grasped the immensity of our vaults? Be advised, the training program also serves as a selection process. In general, we trust the judgment of the spacefarers who dropped you at our doorstep, since they usually do a good job of choosing competent scholars. However, the occasional witless dunce has been found in the mix as well as creeps who try to buy their way in. But don't be alarmed. Even if you fail here, most schools servicing Grand Glees' lay population will be happy to grant tenure to any of our rejected prospects. And you can always find passage back to your homeworld. Grand Glisa is the most active interstellar hub in the sphere, so there's bound to be someone who can take you if you can afford it. But I'm in a hurry. Is there no way to get fast-tracked? Assuming your homeworld is at an average distance from Grand Glisa, and assuming the ship you took made an average velocity of 0.2 c, then you're already a kill a year late for whatever had you so excited. One more deck a year won't make a difference. Is the guach really the sum of all true knowledge? Yes. Our science library 
contains every bit of physics there is. In case you are somehow unaware of it, maybe your world is more of a backwater than you realize, it has long been undisputed that the knowable laws of physics have already been discovered. This has been understood since before leaving the cradle, since before the first interstellar flight. It's called the ling hollenbeck Principle of Surface Detail, and it's well-established fact. A giga year of failed attempts to find new physics is enough to convince us not to listen to your brilliant insight as to how all previous researchers failed to consider something vital. Therefore, you'll find our section on exact sciences is one of the smallest in the archive. There's nothing to add to it. Uh, don't waste your time and definitely don't waste your colleagues' time. Remember, we're not in the business of discovery. Only the history of science interests us. Biology is another matter, of course, since there's no limit to the adaptations life can take. We don't keep many gene sequences archived except of species from the cradle and alien life forms. Most genes are proprietary in any case, and the cost of buying them exceeds our acquisitions budget. Nonetheless, accounts by naturalists are constantly being added to our vaults. As for other areas of human investigation, such as history, sociology, musicology, literature, philosophy, cooking, adenatics, and innumerable others, you'll be taught to avoid using words such as knowledge and true when speaking in those contexts. This is not because they are thought of as lesser. Indeed, most of the work conducted here is in those areas. But because the epistemological framework we use at the archive takes known to mean certain and uses the word true interchangeably with empirically proven. In what language are the documents? I'm only fluent in my native tongue. Most of Guach is in Solarisa, the language of spacefarers. If not, it's only because nobody has gotten around to translating that particular text. You'll be required to read, write, and speak Solarisa perfectly before you can start your research. It's the only thing that comes close to a lingua franca for all of disparate humankind, and you should be ashamed to call yourself a scholar if you haven't mastered it. What units do you use? We also use standard solarisan units, that is, meter, gram, joule, and second as inherited from the cradle. Other frequently used time units are the minute, hour, day, and year. These might be as arbitrary as your provincial miles and pounds, but they are well defined and used by spacefarers across the sphere. Counting is done in decimal. However, when speaking about non-scholarly matters, local glees and units are employed. If a fellow researcher wants to meet you at the pub in an hour, think local. I came here to write the complete history of humankind. Bow before me. We strongly advise against such projects. Complete is the most frequent cause for insanity amongst researchers. Wait, you actually keep physical books? Seems primitive. Bitter experience has taught us that digital can't be trusted. The best drive has an average lifespan of three ecto years. And guess what? That's just long enough for people to forget they had to migrate the files before dumping old storage units. Moreover, even if our software has remained mostly unchanged for many kilo years, old code still becomes unreadable if it's not kept up to date. And spontaneous corruption happens all the time. So yes, we print every document that passes through our hands. But don't scoff at our printing press. The paper used is inflammable, doesn't get wet, and you have to hit the gym pretty hard if you want to tear a page in half. 
Closed books are insusceptible to damage from sunlight. The system is not perfect, though, and books do need to be replaced every so often. On the other hand, we try to keep some things digitized for ease of use. If what you're looking for is not in our cloud, we have machines that can unbind, scan, upload, and rebind a book in less than five minutes. Drones can retrieve anything you want from the vaults. All you have to do is make the request. But when you get a chance, we recommend you take a tour down the corridors of our library. The sheer weight of the words is truly awe-inspiring. Remember to pack some water bottles and protein bars. And a map. Other kinds of files are a bit trickier. Audio we keep in something called a disc, which records sound in analog format, resisting the passage of time much better than any other method. One such disc contains five exhibits of data. Video is kept in image tapes, but these are bulky and don't keep particularly well, so video files are generally eschewed by the archive. Things that need to be digital we try to maintain safe and updated. Part of the precautions we take is limiting access to such files, so your request to read them will have to be approved. They almost always are. Is it true about the essays? Where do you keep the aliens? Calm down. In all of the sphere, only four instances of extrasolar intelligence have been found. And no one is really sure if they are intelligent in the same way humans are. The so-called sculptors of Korot 7 don't even count, as all we have of them is the collection of monumental faces carved into the mountains of the planet a terror year before humankind took to the stars and left behind without another trace of their presence. A spacefaring civilization, yes, but defying all understanding. As for the ruins on 55 Cancri, precious little can be learned from what remains. Finally, the mantis lemurs of Ulan and the nonopods of Green Kepler are generally considered to be very smart animals, not true essays, since they have not developed technology. But we have a million volumes and more on each of these, so you'll be able to read all about them until, as seems inevitable, you'll get bored. What's your health plan? A fantasy will be provided free of charge for as long as you stay with us. If and when you decide to leave, you'll look as young or as old as you think is fashionable. What's the work and the play like? A week at the archive is eight local days long. You'll be required to spend three days doing community work, mostly cataloging, abstracting, translating, and giving lectures to your fellow scholars. Two days are reserved for your own research and two days are free for you to spend as you like. Every 10 weeks, you get one week off, which most of our staff use to go on a bender around town. The city offers endless possibilities for partying. If that's not your thing, Grand Glisa has been in continuous terraformation almost since the beginning of human expansion. You won't find better nature anywhere in the sphere. Am I free to research anything I want? During your first ECTA year with us, your research subjects will have to be approved by a doctor. After that, pretty much yes. There's no forbidden knowledge at the archive, though redundant research is frowned upon. Whether your work will become part of the archive is another question altogether. I saw a disgusting, degenerate, a religious mutant flip-flop lurking the corridors. How can you allow such a deviant inside this hallowed temple? Our scholars come from a thousand different worlds, from a million different cultures. We would appreciate it if you could keep your cultural mores to yourself. You can always sit at a different table in the cafeteria, and you can choose a different collaborator to write that paper with. Hazing, including but not limited to broken skulls, 
has been known to happen with newcomers that were too vocal about their phobias. On the other hand, the Archive has a code of conduct, so don't expect cultural relativism to go as far as to allow every conceivable act. If you are found in breach of said code, the Ethics Committee can, and will, expel you. I'm still feeling overwhelmed by the vastness of the Archive. How can anyone find what they are looking for? You'll learn to trust our indexing methods, but you also need to manage your expectations. It takes a lot of work to find the right references. Really, we can't underscore this point hard enough. Even if you're writing about a very particular sort of embroidering technique used by nomads on the moons of some place nobody has heard about, chances are there's a treatise about it written long before your time. Generally speaking, the older your source is, the worse it gets. The Archive has no fewer than 200 distinct versions of the works of Plato, a cradle-born philosopher. And there's no way of telling which is the original, if any. There are also 2,000 copies that have been proven to be apocryphal. Each of these has sprouted a million glosses and commentaries and much of this is as interesting as the source text. You will get lost in the endless paths of human investigation. And that's really the only way to come across the interesting stuff. But you need to stay on some path. Can I really add anything meaningful to such a collection? The short answer is no. But a better one is this. We hope you can answer that yourself in the ripeness of time. How's the food around here? First day is mincemeat day. You're here for the 5.7 times 10 to the 35 books, not the haute cuisine. And that's our story. Escape Pod is a production of Escape Artists Incorporated and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Don't change it. Don't sell it. Please do share it. If you'd like to support Escape Pod, please rate or review us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite app. We are 100% audience supported, and we count on your donations to keep the lights on and the servers humming. You can now donate via four different platforms. On Patreon and Ko-fi, search for Escape Artists. On Twitch, we're at EA Podcasts. You can also use PayPal through our website, escapepod.org. Patreon subscribers have access to exclusive merchandise and can be automatically added to our Discord, where they can chat with other fans as well as our staff members. Our opening and closing music is by Daikaiju at daikaiju.org. And our closing quotation this week is from Pablo Neruda's Nobel Prize Lecture. Nuestras estrellas primordiales son la lucha y la esperanza. Pero no hay lucha ni esperanzas solitarias. En todo hombre se juntan las épocas remotas, la inercia, los errores, las pasiones, las urgencias de nuestro tiempo, la velocidad de la historia. Our original guiding stars are struggle and hope. But there is no such thing as a lone struggle, no such thing as a lone hope. In every human being are combined the most distant epics, passivity, mistakes, sufferings, the pressing urgencies of our own time, the pace of history. Thanks for joining us, and may your escape pod be fully stocked with stories. <laughs>